the population of Africa is set to quadruple by the end of this century. The space for wildlife is going to become increasingly under pressure. We have to find a way of reconciling the needs of animals. Otherwise, the wild will go. No question in my mind, it will all be gone. Meru National Park, over 800 square kilometers of remote wilderness in northern Kenya, where George and Joy Adamson of Born Free fame returned Elsa the lioness to the wild, the land of the lion. I'm Will Travers from the Born Free Foundation, and I'm traveling to Meru on a very special mission. I'm standing on a huge rock in the middle of Meru National Park, looking out across this massive wilderness area. Who wouldn't be inspired by Africa and want to try and do everything they could to protect it? And that's why Born Free is here. Born Free is here in Meru, working with the Kenya Wildlife Service, in particular on a lion census. Now, we've heard probably many things about lions, but one thing maybe not everybody knows is the lions are in trouble, serious trouble. 30 years ago, there were maybe 80,000 lions. Today, the IUCN says there might be 20,000. Born Free are determined to do something about it. And the first thing we need to know is we need to know how many lions there are. Because if we don't know how many lions there are now, we don't know what impact our efforts have in the future on either raising the number or stabilizing the number, or heaven forbid, the number keeps going down. Having reviewed our plans with Tim, Victor, and the rest of the Born Free team, we headed out to find lions. Okay, some lions have been sighted, um, oh. which is very good news for this evening's work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're near a junction that's not far from here. Is waiting for us in that area to send oh. some vehicles down and um, and see if we can actually spot them. So we're here in Meru at the KWS, the Kenya Wildlife Service headquarters, and behind me is the research team and other members of this larger group that are going to carry out the census. Not far from here, they've seen fresh footprints. So we're all very excited and we're about to go off and see if we can find some lions. Wild lions are naturally wary of humans. They've learned to be elusive. Footprints in the dust, lion spore, it's a certain sign. We're traveling along a dirt road, we're looking for these lion tracks. What, what are you looking for particularly? So we've laid a transect of uh, between 10 and 15 kilometers all over the park. And that, and that means driving a, a, a line of about 10 or 15 kilometers. Yeah. And all the time you're looking down on the ground. Yeah, we have a master tracker. Yeah. So every time we spot a, a spoor of any large carnival, we stop, we identify okay. if possible. And this, this data will extrapolate later and it will give us numbers or estimate of the population. I see. Every time we see a footprint, we take a record. Is it a male? Is it a female? An adult or a cub? Footprints are one thing, but spotting lions is another. So, Zeke, we're looking at a track here in the, in the dust, but you can read a lot from this. 
Well, tell me what you see. Well, one can read a lot from it. It's it's an it's an old track. This is a, a well-worn track in terms of weathering. Um, it's had a, at least 24 hours, maybe even longer than that, 48 hours to, to weather from passing traffic mostly and a bit of wind as well, just natural wind. Mm. But you can see that it's very blurred. It just looks like a dent in the sand. But if you know what to look for, you can see that the four toes have made that arc in the sand there and the heel pad has made this in, indent at the back here. So it actually is, you can tell it's walking in that direction. It's walking down the road the way we're going. Right. We spent the whole day searching, but not even a glimpse of a lion. We were going to have to rely on a different and potentially more dangerous technique. Now, some people will say, what is a lion census? And a lion census is a counting of lions in an, in an area like Mary National Park, but we're using two different methodologies. The first is that we drive along transects and we see if we can see the footprints, the spoor of lions, and we take a record. But we don't just use this transect methodology. We use what's called a callback methodology. Now that means you play the sound of, in this case, a buffalo that is being killed by lions. In other words, a distress call. And you see where the lions react. And from the reaction, you're able to work out how many lions there are in the national park. And then you compare the two different methodologies. At night, the bush becomes an entirely different world. creating a dangerous situation. We're interfering with wildlife. We shouldn't be doing that. So we need to do it very carefully. Mm -hmm. Have a lot of respect for these carnivores. At night, it's their domain. If you play the call for five minutes as before, and then you will be quiet for five minutes with no lights, okay? After five minutes, you'll scan for five minutes. And that's enough time for anything that's within our two and a half to five kilometer buffer to arrive. If they're interested, they will come. So as soon as the lines are there, you want to be looking at them. All right, they might not stick around too long. In the dark, you never know who's behind you.
Having seen the lions, the Born Free team set out to investigate the threats that have contributed to their worrying decline over the last 20 years and what, together with the Kenya Wildlife Service, we can do about it. The census is a real, real uh, positive thing and we believe that out of this exercise we'll be able to determine the actual position, position of uh, or the population of the lion species that we have within the park. And uh, there is a serious challenge in terms of poaching activities and that's why even the President of the Republic of Kenya has personally intervened in various ways to ensure that uh, anti-poaching operations are supported across. The recent past experience that we had of serious poaching across will definitely be a thing of the past. I set off with our Born Free de-snaring team on foot, deep into the park, with armed KWS support. The poachers killed the animals, which we are all trying to protect. The moment the head, or say the leg, goes through, it'll get, uh, it start getting tighter and tighter and tighter and because the tree is really firm it'll get very it will be very difficult for the animal to save itself from uh, from the snare so that's that's how it works really and in many cases these animals die very very painful deaths either way it, it really affects the animal so an animal may live a miserable life if it survives at all. Snares are a serious uh, threat. Any animal can fall a victim. And the poacher may not have targeted the elephant, may have wanted some meat from the buffaloes, but an elephant happened to come through and died. A really miserable and uh, painful death. Many other animals too have fallen into this. It only happens that we spotted this. There could be hundreds of others, not only in Meru, but many other parts of, uh, of Kenya and Africa that go through the same. In Born Free, if you look at all our projects, our projects are based basically conservation and education. What we have done is within Born Free, we have a special program called the Global Friends. And that Global Friends is the one that goes into the local communities, into the schools, and we talk to the young children in schools from primary to secondary about how to conserve wildlife and how wildlife is very important to Kenya and basically to just the ecosystem. Without wildlife, Kenya is not economically sound. Bone Free is one of the films that when we were young, we saw the film and it made us feel that we should live wildlife to just roam free in the wild. It's the film that we kept on seeing and that really motivated us to or showed us that uh, wildlife should be let free. Meru National Park is a survivor. Despite all the challenges, it's still a wilderness worth protecting. Born Free is determined to make sure that Meru and its wildlife and its lions have a future. We've had the most amazing time here in Meru. We've seen Born Free and our partners in action. We went out 
desnaring and actually found 10 snares which we removed from one area of, of land near the local communities. Then we went to those local communities and talked to them about some of the challenges that they face and how working together we can actually do something about it. But most importantly we've been here for the lion census and we've, we've been out actually finding lions. We've been out following spoor along the roads, seeing the footprints of lions, counting them with the research team. And then we sat up at night and we had the call back where we waited, played the sound of a, of a buffalo being killed by a lion, and then the lions came in. It was truly magical. And that's why we think, and I'm, I know this view is shared by everybody, that Meru is worth saving. It's worth protecting for the long term. And there are people dedicated to doing that here in the park. And we're very proud to be part of that. So with our partners at Land Rover, we're working here in Meru to make sure that this is a stronghold for lions. This is the park of Born Free. <laughs>